So we're now going to hear from, from Barry Tiley about issues to do with renewable energy. So Barry, when we get the full when screen, we get the screen back, back that's, it. that's it. Over, over to you, Barry. Can you uh, let me share the screen, please? Uh, yes, anybody can share the screen now. Okay. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Um, the wrong moment. Right, okay. So our group came out of a project um, originally run by Sheffield University. Uh, looking at the possibility of really wind turbines or photovoltaic panels in uh, in Stotsbridge area, and uh, Chris uh, alluded to that on one of his slides, and uh, he was he was part of that as well. Um, so we came out of this, and we got interested really in um, what is the possibility of uh, generally generating renewable energy in the Upperton area. So there's our objectives there to promote. The need for improved energy efficiency and renewable energy generation, to promote awareness of environmental and related issues, supporting educational initiatives related to renewable energy, and to install and maintain community owned renewable energy in generation as where possible. So I suppose looking at what the individual can do, what, what can they do to reduce their energy use uh, and reduce their carbon footprint? Well, uh, Nick referred to the Insulate Homes initiative by the government. That's the uh, Green Homes Grants voucher scheme, which was um, a problem from the start, really. It seemed to like a disastrous scheme to, to set up. And they scrapped it now. I think it scrapped on Wednesday. And I think uh, Faye, who's uh, following me, was pro probably got personal experience of this and can probably talk about it. But it's another um, cockeyed scheme where they're trying to establish a market, the government, in the, in the energy field uh, without thinking it through and without letting it run to fruition. Um, so there's insulate homes. Reduce energy is obviously important. Uh, secondly, stop the use of fossil fuel, particularly using uh, town gas uh, for heating homes. I think uh, the amount of CO2 generated in this country 31% comes from domestic heaters. Um, so change to renewable energy is important there. We organize, we have organized Green Energy Days in Stocksbridge and Pediston, and we'll uh, do some more in the future, where people can visit homes and businesses like um, Bullhouse, uh, where uh, Charles Booth talked last time. Uh, businesses and Places which use renewable energy, that's heat pumps, photovoltaic, battery, solar, wind turbine, and biomass, etc. And uh, lastly, people can change their driving habits, obviously. Public transport, Franz talked about that. Um, change over to electric, hybrid, hydrogen cars, maybe. Um, and we've campaigned for more electric charging points in Stocksbridge and Penniston. And there are some in the Towns Fund for Stocksbridge in the future, we hope. So what can a community do to generate renewable, renewable energy? Well, if a group of houses has access to falling water or wind or land, then photovoltaic, battery, water or wind turbines, communal heat pumps, biomass, heat from sewage, anaerobic digesters are possible. Um, but really, uh, renewable energy comes down to the successful, successful development, really, it depends. It's a good illustration of the unequal ownership of resources in this country. You've got to have access to the potential to generate the energy in the first place. One further problem uh, is that you might need a distributed electricity network. However, it's illegal to sell electricity between houses. The organization in the area that has a monopoly on it um, can, can prosecute you. Currently, there's a local electricity bill which has been developed by a cross-party group of MPs, and that's going through Parliament at the moment, and we expect it to become law. 
uh, groups of houses can share electricity, give electricity, but they can't sell it between them. It's illegal. So we promote local communities uh, using renewable energy. And some examples are the uh, Willows Social Housing at Oxpring, which has a PV battery uh, installation on, I think, 20 houses, but Faye will correct me if that's, that's wrong, um, which went very well and reduced the energy use. Local um, communities that have access to um, land in windy areas like Langley Farm have got a community wind turbine and New Mills um, was the first place really in this area that generated electricity using hydro, uh, using the Archimedean screw system. And Bullhouse uh, Estate and Mill, we heard about last time. Um, houses that use less energy are critical for the future. And uh, one of our members um, uh, was developing a passive house, uh, two terraces of passive houses on Hunshelf Bank. And we hope that will still go ahead. Now, what could the town do to generate renewable energy? Well, much larger installations, obviously. In Stocksbridge, community heat pumps from flooded mine galleries is a potential. We sit on a, a largest coal field that's been uh, dug out over the years, and those flooded galleries can be used with heat pumps to generate energy. Photovoltaic arrays, wind turbines, question mark. We surveyed uh, people in Stocksbury some time ago, and they were 50-50 in favour and against wind turbines. When it comes to other renewable energy systems, people don't have a problem by and large. They're not intrusive. Uh, linked small energy producers. There are people in Stocksbridge uh, that generate electricity that are uh, carbon negative, have small systems, and these could be linked and provide to people that wanted to buy it. Anaerobic digesters. Um, we have a current project coming to an end, which they might talk a bit more about, and we'll probably go into more in the, in the uh, session. Um, where it looks at potential feedstocks that are available in the area that can generate biomethane. And this methane can then be burnt or stored or sold. Um, such, thing, such feedstocks as maybe grass, uh, crops maybe on land that isn't used for food, um, such things. Uh, anaerobic digestion is a, an interesting way of generating electricity. And rather than things rotting down to produce carbon dioxide, they rot down aerobically and produce methane. So, and uh, what is critical in the future is you need a local energy electricity network rather than the grid we've got at the moment. If we go over to electricity, then we're likely to need three times as much and the current system can't take it. Uh, the energy providers are keen for this to happen but who's going to pay for it? They don't want to. They want to, society to pay for it. I think that's about it, really. Uh, oh, there's our initiatives over the uh, so far. We'd like to provide PV battery systems on community buildings, uh, such as in the pavilion, maybe in Stocksbridge and others. Um, we have investigated potential hydro schemes, and there was one particular um, one which looked quite successful, which would be successful. Um, this was the outflow from a reservoir where there are houses nearby and we wanted to um, rent or borrow the water for, say, a couple of seconds through a 50 kilowatt turbine. And the water authority said, no, you can't have it. Would not let, let I, I don't think the speakers are hearing the bell. <laughs> Could you be winding it up, please? No. Sorry. OK, that, that's it. And uh, a feasibility study for a community digester we've talked about. Um, and a current campaign in schools to uh, ask school children for their ideas about saving energy, renewable energy. Thank you. Thanks ever so much, Barry. That's a very impressive list of a whole range of things that, that, that we can do and that can be done within communities.